Super. Thanks very much. Okay. Um, I I will get I'll get cracking then. So on to the, the next slide then. Okay, so this is the um, agenda for today. Um, we're going to start off with an introduction to um, fMRI uh, by the SRO for, uh, for, for fMRI, Lee's story. Um, I'm just going to just give a very quick five minute welcome and introduction. Uh, after this, the fMRI director, uh, Christian Thaler, is going to provide an update on the funding opportunity in the light of the fMRI program. Um, and then in the, the last bit of the, the presentation bit, um, I'm going to provide some, some call specific information, which will help you when, when preparing your, your proposal. And if you have any questions that haven't been covered in the presentation or want a clarification, please do use that uh, Q&A function and we'll ask, answer your question on the webinar. So without further ado, I'll hand over to, to Lee to, to give us uh, an introduction to fMRI. Good afternoon all, thank you, Oliver. Uh, so I've only got two slides um, and it's gonna be a high level overview um, of the program, but then uh, a little bit into what is this call for and, 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 and what's some of the wider context. So um, hopefully some of you are aware the Future Marine Research Infrastructure Program is NERC looking at how it uh, moves into the 2030s uh, and how it upgrades the current research infrastructure that we've got. Uh, and we're going through a process of seeing what requirements pull uh, might be uh, as we move into the 2030. So understanding from the scientists what they might want uh, and also exploring what technology pushes uh, might be available to us. And, and this is one part of that. OK, so um, if you haven't had a chance to read the report, uh, you can get it by the fMRI website on the um, measurement systems. Uh, for future oceanography um, uh, that was uh, the output from a workshop undertaken uh, late last year. Um, and thank you again to Professor Matt Molam, uh, Dr. Rowan Allen and others that participated in that. Um, that report um, is excellent because it sets some of the scene, sets some challenges for, for NERC to think about in terms of developing marine sensors uh, and comes up with some very good recommendations. And I'm going to pull out three of them in this slide. Uh, that's the stuff on the left. So uh, we need to develop a clear uh, roadmap um, for sensor development. Uh, we need to uh, further strengthen collaboration between industry, the, the developers, wherever they may sit, uh, and the end users. Uh, and as these sensors move up the technology readiness levels, we need to be prepared to test them, test them properly in their operating environments, uh, and make sure that they're fit for purpose. And um, I think that's... Um, a critical element of this um, because we, 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 one of the things we need to do is, is try to better understand how long is it going to take us to develop these novel sensors and how can we get them into the platforms as quickly as possible. So alongside uh, hopefully developing uh, and bringing into use such some really excellent sensors from this, we'll also in the background be understanding how do we accelerate that in future. Um, and, and what does that tell us about the, the possibilities and the practicalities uh, as we move to uh, additional investment uh, and, and scaling that up? Um, next slide, please, Rachel. So I guess the other point I was gonna make uh, uh, in, in a more general context, um, if we are focusing on autonomous platforms in terms of these um, th this sensors call, um, those autonomous platforms have got um, unique characteristics which um, potentially allow them to be used by the science users uh, in interesting and novel ways. And so a couple of those uh, would be their endurance. Uh, we're looking at sensor, we're looking at platforms that can go out for many months. Um, six to 12 months uh, would be the, the sort of optimum. They can travel a long, a long way. Uh, potentially they can hibernate for a certain period of time on, on the on the seabed but the sensors have got to be able to support that uh that um that that sort of operational characteristic so sensors that are more resistant to biofouling sensors that uh, uh have less of an issue with uh, drift sensors that use less energy all those things together are going to help the platform or the system uh uh 
meet that challenge of it increasing its endurance. The C2 side, the, the, comms and, uh, the command and communication, um, command control and communication, um, sensors that um, support um, easy data transfer, but potentially in future, sensors that interact with the onboard control system. Uh, and as we move to making these platforms more autonomous, uh, the data that's captured by these scientific sensors goes into the, the control system and informs where the platform uh, goes to next, rather than it being actively piloted uh, by someone ashore. The people element of this. So uh, these sensors ideally are easy to maintain. Uh, they have a plug and play type approach, so easy to integrate into, into multiple platforms. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a sense that um, this call is specific. It sits within a slightly wider context in terms of making the marine autonomous systems of the future more flexible, um, uh, uh, more beneficial to the, the science users. And that's, that's within a bigger framework uh, of fMRI, which is understanding that the entirety of our future research infrastructure uh, and, and how we bring those bits together. Um, that's me. I will hang around um, for the rest of this webinar, but I'll hand you over now to Christian Tuller. Okay, so hopefully everyone can see me. Thank you, Lee. So I will now be talking to you uh, a little bit more about the specifics of the call and how it supports uh, the fMRI program. So if we move to the next slide, please. So I'd like to start by highlighting that NERC is not looking to fund a set of siloed projects here. Um, that advance a specific short-term science mission. And nor are we looking to deliver a limited incremental advance of an immature technology that would still be immature uh, with the aim of developing it in the future. This announcement of opportunity and the projects it will fund is an integral part of the wider transformation of the UK's marine research infrastructure, the fMRI programme, and projects need to support that transformation by delivering capabilities that could be made accessible to the wider science community. So that can be used by people outside of the project team. Next slide, please. So what is the fMRI program and why are we funding this activity? So, the opportunity is linked to the UKRI Infrastructure Fund, and that provides the budget uh, to develop and deliver uh, the strategic investment in the next generation of large-scale marine research infrastructure. And FMRI is currently developing a business case that needs to demonstrate to HM Treasury that all of the options under consideration are viable. So that includes the familiar model of a research ship uh, based infrastructure, but also other new options such as networked autonomy. And so we have to evidence that all of those options uh, can work in order to take them forwards. From the um, net zero oceanographic capability scoping study and the measurement systems for 21st century oceanography, consultation uh, that Lee has talked about. We have identified that the success of the future infrastructure, uh, particularly around those autonomous capabilities, will depend on the ability to rapidly translate sensor innovation into robust and deployable solutions that deliver science. And it is important to prove uh, for the business case that there is this viable path to rapid translation of sensor innovation that is the justification for funding this project now. Uh, next slide, please. So as mentioned, uh, this call is uh, seeking to show that sensor innovation, and that doesn't have to necessarily be uh, in the marine sector, can be rapidly translated into deployed, deployable solutions for marine science. So for example, one could imagine a mature aerospace sensor technology that could be marinized under this um, investment 
uh, for use in an oceanographic context. So yes, uh, we want to expand the range of sensors uh, that marine scientists have access to. That's sort of a secondary goal alongside this proving of the, uh, of the shortened timeline um, for advancing through technology readiness levels. So for this reason, proposals need to show a high level of technological maturity, TRL 7 plus, and a clear pathway to TRL 8, 9, um, so that we can have confidence that within the two year uh, timeline of the funded projects, they will deliver solutions for science. And it is important to remember that that timeline has to allow for integration, trial, and any associated um, data analysis. So this call is limited to biogeochemical sensors and uh, the projects need to expand the range of such uh, biogeochemical sensors available to the science community through the National Marine Equipment Pool. And that means that the sensors need to be robust, uh, reliable, uh, be supported by the necessary documentation to allow their operation by national marine facilities technicians, uh, not just the developers. And ideally, we would have a route to procuring these uh, sensors in the future. Next slide. So while proposals may include integration with other platforms as part of the project costs, it, uh, it is essential that uh, there is integration with National Marine Facilities um, NMEP platforms so that they can be accessed, uh, these capabilities can be accessed by uh, other scientists. So the three platforms that we are considering are Autosub Long Range, Kongsberg Sea Glider and Teledyne Slocum Glider. So there has to be integration with one or more of those. The cost of integration uh, with the NMEP platforms does not have to be costed in to the project. That will be covered separately. Um, there are certain uh, technical requirements for that. We need an output as an RS-232 data stream and also uh, standardized descriptors in machine readable format. Um, but it, so it's important that applicants um, engage early with the uh, team at the National Oceanography Center, the NMF uh, Mars team, to understand whether the proposal you're putting forward is feasible and um, allow us to, to, to plan for that, and allow, allow you to plan for it as well. So just to highlight that the funded projects will need to collaborate with each other and with uh, the team from the National Oceanography Centre to ensure that we have a plan for integration that delivers capabilities uh, for the community within the lifetime of the programme and the timeline for the trial opportunity. Next slide, please. So there will be one validation trial covering all of the funded projects. Uh, this will involve um, the autonomous platforms and a research vessel to allow for co-sampling. Its primary focus will be to prove the technologies rather than to deliver ambitious science. And this is reflected in the fixed location of uh, operating the Southwestern approaches. Uh, the trial will start and finish uh, in Southampton subject to final approval with the um, marine facilities planning activities. Um, though of course any science outputs will be viewed um, positively, um, but it's just important to say that this is, the focus of this is as an engineering and validation trial. So the projects will need to collaborate with each other throughout in order to deliver that trial, because they'll all have to come together uh, with single platforms at the same time and with the team from the National Oceanography Centre to uh, develop the trials plan. As with the integration and data management costs, these do not need to be costed in to the project. So the, the trials costs are all covered um, centrally. 
However, the projects do need to consider the cost of sending any staff uh, from the project team on the mission. That will not be covered. And any time for data analysis afterwards and for reporting on the outcomes. So the final thing to talk about is the management. So I've, we've learned the lessons of um, previous uh, project. Some of you may be aware of the Oceanids program that ran for five years from 2016 to 2021. Um, and there's a lot of useful learning from that. So we try to have uh, reporting arrangements and monitoring that is proportionate, but given the tight timelines for delivering robust, fully integrated and validated technologies, uh, we will be doing monthly check-ins with uh, the teams uh, to understand progress and challenges um, and to help keep those different work streams coordinated. Um, and then uh, quarterly, we'll look in more detail at the uh, progress against the plans. So the FMRI program office will not be providing PM support for the delivery of individual projects, but we will be providing that coordination uh, between the projects and uh, the NOC for the trial. So I think that's everything that I had uh, to say to you, and I will pass over to uh, Oliver. Thank you, Christian. Okay. Hi again, everyone. So yes, I am Oliver Nevitt, I'm the Head of Research Capital and Place at NERC, and um, it's uh, my team that is uh, delivering the call. So at the bottom of the screen here, you'll see our, our email address uh, if you want to contact us after it. Um, so in my talk now, I'm just going to go through the um, call specific details, let's say, for um, for this uh, for this call. Um, you will find I'll be repeating a lot of the stuff that you've heard from Christian's presentation, but I'm I'm kind of packaging it in a way to understand what a what a good proposal might look like, and to try and uh, and help you understand the application process, just to help you build your your proposal. So um, I guess firstly the, the the nuts and bolts of the application process itself. So um the funding opportunity is going to be run on the new UKRI funding service that we we, we call uh, TFS uh, funding service um we, we can't accept any applications on the on on JAS anymore that you might be familiar with previously um and it's going to be the responsibility of the, the project lead to be completing the application process on the, on the new funding service so in the uh how to apply section of the call there are some further details and guidance on the the application process and if you do encounter any technical difficulties um, do contact the funding service support on the uh, list on the call announcement um, and if you're uh, thinking of uh, sending in an application please do make sure your organization is registered in the, in the new funding service and if you're not you should start that process uh, as soon as possible because it will take up to or at least 10 working days for the for the organization to be added so so do check that um, the maximum award per proposal is, is 800,000, and there's, there's no minimum figure for this. Um, and as Christian said, the, the, the call is specifically for the creation of an asset. Uh, so we are funding this at 100%. Um, but uh, you, please note that um, all costs associated with the proposal must be capitalizable. And I'm going to go into uh, precisely what um, I mean by that in, in a few slides' time. Um, Individuals can be involved in no more than two applications submitted for the for, for, to this funding opportunity, um, but only one of these as a project lead. Um, projects can run for up to 18 months. So ideally your development and integration must be finalized by the start of March, 2025. And then following that will be the C trial soon after that. Um, and the closing date for applications will be the 2nd of May, 2024 at 4pm. So next slide, please. So um, a lot of this information is, is under the, uh, the AO, under the, the, the what we're looking for, um, but I'll, I'll just briefly run through them. So we're aiming to fund sensors that can collect or sample data and provide information on marine biogeochemical processes. Uh, we're aiming to fund sensors that can be rapidly integrated and deployed into marine autonomous systems within the NMAP. Um, sensors that can demonstrate a potential for future commercialization. 
um, sensors that will enable novel approaches to addressing current and future scientific priorities and sensors that are ready to be included in the national research, national future research infrastructure, I should say. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so eligibility. So before you do apply for funding, please do uh, check the NERC uh, eligibility guidance for both applicants and organizations. Um, we really want to encourage applications from uh, diverse groups of researchers, and that includes individuals at any career stage. And we also want to encourage uh, research clinicians with other career organizations. Um, businesses um, and private sector and the private sector uh, and also um, international project leads are not um, eligible applicant organizations. However, we do welcome them as project partners. Um, and if I go on to the next slide, I've got some more information about project partners there too. Um, so this is just to be clear about what we mean as project partners. So a project partner is defined as a collaborating organization who will have an integral role in the proposed research that, that might include in-kind or cash contributions. Um, so if your application does include a project partner, please be clear on the role and the contribution of the project partner in your proposal. Um, project partners must be essential to the delivery of the project and can actually include equipment suppliers. Um, if you do have project partners, there's a, there's a template form titled project partner contributions to fill out. Um, and there's a table on and sort of basic information about your project partner, including their contributions. So please paste that table into the box uh, into your first faster submission. Um, and just to be clear, uh, uh, letters of support from project partners are no longer needed in the application process. Uh, next slide, please. So um, I mentioned earlier um, about this being a capital call to create an asset and um, a return to capitalizable costs. So this is just uh, to make clear uh, what we're looking to fund here. So um, in, this fun uh, in this funding opportunity, we're looking to fund the creation of a uh, new or at least an upgrade to existing sensors with the aim to enhance the technology readiness level up to a minimum of seven, TOR seven. So um, this call only covers capital. Um, we can cover that um, at 100% of the cost of a capital asset. So that includes any of the development and the, the labor that's associated with the creation of the asset. Um, so some of that might include the, the, the transportation and delivery cost. So uh, when you're uh, making your application, please put all of the costs into the equipment heading only um, on, the, on the TFS system. Um, we are not going to fund uh, technologies uh, that are not going to create a, uh, a productive asset. So um, you know, they're not going to kind of get up to at least tier L7 as the, as the final product, um, as these and higher levels have uh, potential for future commercialization. Um, also, we are not looking to, to fund things that are not able to be integrated into underwater autonomous systems. Um, so um, we're, we're not looking, for example, to, to fund things that go on you know, standalone sensors or animal-borne sensors. That's not the scope of this call. Um, next slide, please. Okay, um, so the assessment process itself, uh, Process, we are appointing an expert independent panel that's going to assess all proposals. Um, assuming your proposal meets the eligibility criteria that I've just, just talked about, um, every proposal that meets the criteria is going to be assessed at the panel. Um, the panel are going to use assessment criteria that are outlined in the assessment of uh, opportunity. I'm going to talk about those more in a moment. Um, it also looks at the uh, funding opportunity requirements uh, throughout the uh, throughout the uh, opportunity of announcement. Um, and uh, we are going to fund uh, the highest ranked proposals that the, the panel recommend to us uh, within the constraints of the budget. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so the assessment criteria, as I say, these are all in the announcement opportunity, but I'll, I'll talk through them now. So there's, there's five assessment criteria, the purpose, vision, approach, um, applicant and team uh, capability to deliver and the ethics and responsible research and innovation. Um, so in the purpose section, um, all applicants need to explain what the proposed sensor actually is, what does it measure, what, what, why is it needed, why is it useful for marine science, and uh, why not be careful. 
um, and we've got them to talk about uh, why this development is timely, why it's meeting uh, the scientific community's need and demands, and how it enhances the uh, research capability at a local, regional, or national scale. And uh, really try and highlight here the main science question that the, sci that the sensor is going to address or enable and how it's going to do that. Um, in the vision section, um, uh, applicants need to explain what is going to be achieved with the proposed sensor, including the potential to advance the current understanding or generate new knowledge within a specific area or beyond. Um, and we also want to see how it's going to demonstrate the benefits and the wider impacts and the beneficiaries of, of what you're undertaking. Um, in the approach section, uh, we want you to demonstrate the method of the, the delivery of your project. So this is identifying all the main risks and, and the mitigation for those risks. And in general, uh, a project plan for, for development and delivery, including the main milestones and timelines. Um, in the next section, uh, Please, can you um, outline your team's expertise, skills, and uh, the experience to deliver this work? And for the last section here, uh, please can you just demonstrate how you've uh, been thoroughly considered all the ethical and responsible and considerations in your in the entire application. Um, next slide, please. Um, okay. So uh, just a little bit more on uh, the, the sensor integration and the seed trial. Um, Christian's already provided some information about this. Um, so this is just how to put it into your application. So this funding opportunity is gonna enable access to the, uh, to the marine, uh, National Marine Equipment Pool, um, and it's gonna include access to autonomous platforms and ships. As Christian said, you please do not include the costs for the, for the use of these autonomous platforms and ships in your application. Um, so while the, the CE trial timing will be determined based on the ship's availability to allow sufficient time for project teams to work on the integration into the autonomous platforms and allocate NMF resources, um, please, uh, we're going to ask you to, to fill out the autonomous deployment form, so that's the ADF form, and submit this during your application. Um, and uh, yeah, please please use the, uh, the following steps for that and take note of the, the specific deadlines um, within that form. Um, okay, next slide, please. Um, so once um, all of the applications have been submitted and assessed, uh, the following is going to happen with uh, with the successful applicants. So we're going to work together with the uh, National Marine Facilities team on developing the final version of the sensor development integration and demonstration delivery plan. And uh, successful applicants are going to uh, collaborate with other project leads and teams facilita facilitated by NMF on the integration of all the sensors into the underwater autonomous platforms. Um, the final sensor demonstration will be in the form of a single search cruise, which is going to take place in around spring to summer 2026, which will be sailing uh, from and back to Southampton. Um, all of the dialect sensors are going to need to be integrated into underwater autonomous platforms by the by this point for, for, for validation. Um, if you do have any uh, questions about the sensor integration, uh, please just... Uh, contact um, us in the first instance, and we can put you put you through to the National Marine Facilities team um, about the, the, uh, the sea trials. Otherwise, that's that's everything I was gonna say. Um, I don't think we've received any questions yet into the Q&A box, uh, but uh, so I'll, I'll hang around for just a moment just to make sure there's anything that anybody wants to ask. But otherwise, if anything does, does come to mind, um, like I said, the email address for our team, uh, uh, the, the capital team is, is there. Um, and uh, yeah, has, has one just arrived, let's have a look. Um, Andrew Morris. Uh, so is it planned for the validation cruise to happen outside of the project? Uh, cruise summer uh, 2026 from the first slides, also project uh, 2024 to uh, 2026 from the second slides. Uh, Christian, uh, do you want to quickly comment on that? Um, yeah. Uh, oops. One second. Trying to make my camera work. Uh, there we go. So the we we are trying to uh, secure agreement to have the project end date 
extend to the end of the trial. So it is the intention that the that will be a full two years. Um, yes. Um, but in, at the moment, that's not fully confirmed. Christian. Um, I think this, uh, the second one is probably another one for you, Christian. So does it matter if uh, you're proposing one or three sensors to be developed in the call? So that's a question from Anthony uh, Lucio. I, I don't... Um... If it's within the the framework of the uh, two, if it's you know it's if it's within the budget of a single application, then there's no reason not to um, for us not to be investing in more than one one sensor. Um, as mentioned, there's the the limit of uh, leading a maximum of one application and being involved in two. Yeah, that's right. Um, I should say as well, we will um, we will collate a lot of these questions that are going in here, and we'll develop uh, an FAQs document um, just to just to make available so that there's some uh, some written answers to these as well, just so it, it's clear for for all attendees that want and want able to make this. Um, okay, so the next question is about BGC uh, essential ocean variables. Do the sensors that are developed have to address the BGC ocean, uh, essential ocean variables um, are shared in the additional information, which are very definite, or are sensors that target BGC research in scope as well? Um, I'll, I'll hand over to Christian, but I, I, my assumption is that they are all in scope. But uh, yeah, is that, is that fair to say? It's an I hadn't thought about this. Um, the additional information is there for guidance uh, purposes. So for for me um or that it will be for the panel to interpret uh in the end um it's it's a, it is about the uh yeah bgc research aims um rather than that specific list um so the next question um is about um, commercial application. So does the proposed sensor need to have a demonstrated commercial application? And um, um, so I, I would remind you about the, uh, the definitions of uh, technological readiness levels that uh, we have on the uh, on the UKRI website in that instance about uh, tier L7. So that is um, it needing to be uh, uh, de deployable in, in, the, in the right context. Uh, but otherwise, it doesn't need to have a, a, a clear CT to commercial application. I don't know whether, Christian, you had a, a, anything further to add on I, that. I agree. But we're doing this to have a um, a science capability and science uh, uh, science infrastructure. That's that's why we're doing uh, this project. So it doesn't need to have commercial applications. If there, if you know, commercial applications give us a route to procuring this in the future. Uh, and make it affordable. That's that's a positive for us, but it is not a prerequisite that it has to have non-science applications. Okay, thanks, Christian. Um, okay, so the uh, next question um, is, a, is a bit of a multi-part question, so I, I might might break it down. So, firstly, should should all biogeochemical sensors be included in the design? Um, so uh, I'm, I'm not totally clear on, on that, what that first uh, part means. As a Christian, you know, should all biological sensors be included? I'm, in the design? I'm afraid I'm not clear on the uh, on the answer either. Yeah. Uh, question, please sorry. do resubmit that 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 um, uh, again if if you just want to cl clarify what you mean there. But I think we should be able to answer the second bit, which is um, industrial partners uh, whether they can receive funding. Um, so uh, to to be able to be an applicant, um, you uh, you need to be within the kind of approved list of of, of kind of uh, applicants that are they're able to receive uh, NERC and UKRI funding. However, um, if if they're going to have a tangible role in the project, then they can be a project partner. So I'll just refer you back to the the the, the, the slides I mentioned earlier about um, project partners there. Um, in terms of the funding percentage for academia and industry, um, 
uh, again, I, I wouldn't want to uh, uh, put a put a percentage on there. Um, but uh, you know, the the assumption is here that uh, you will be uh, leading on it as as the the applicant there, and the responsibility to deliver will be on you as the applicant. So, uh, Christian, I don't know whether you had any further comments on on that on those. No, I think that's uh, that's a good answer. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, okay. Uh, next question: How do you define bio, uh, biochemical sensor? Is this the target substance or also the method of measurement? For example, are optical measurement proxies eligible? I'll, I'll hand that straight over to Christian, I think. That's... So, yeah, so for, for me, this is, this is about doing biogeochemistry. So looking at those physical, chemical, biological processes. Um, and and so, so it's not, yes, it, it is what you are measuring that defines it as uh bgc rather than how the sensor works uh, if that answers the question um uh, uh, yes there's a there's a thing about optical measurement proxies being eligible but i think that yeah you've covered that question and that this is about what we want to study not the the means of being able to, to study it um okay uh so uh the next question is um uh, so about already planned assets or co-funded can't claim institution contribution. So the high TRL requirement in the short term of project technology probably exists in some form. So if the project deliverables are distinct from existing projects uh, or funding, can institution contribution be included? Um, so, uh, oh, I can see. Tina, you have your, your hand up here. You got yes. this specific, yeah. Yes, so hi everyone, I'm Tina Temporal. I'm also working on this uh, call. Just to answer this question quickly, it is in the announcement of opportunity, and it just means that if you are at any point getting funding from elsewhere, uh, just to include it in a, in, a, in a way how much funding has been um, acquired from elsewhere, and how much is requested from NERC. So if you put the total amount of your to deliver your asset is, let's say, an X amount. So how much are you requesting from NERC or how, and how much will be uh, leveraged from another partner or industry partner, if that makes sense. So thanks, Tina. Yeah, and to be clear, this is about leverage. So we are funding at 100%. So everything within the, the project scope is in 100%. So this is, um, but, this, but this, yes, this can be, this should be, and it's appropriate to have this covered in the application. Um, Okay, uh, so uh, next question. Um, whether the solution will focus on the innovative part only or should it also include as many as uh, what is available already thus to make it a complete solution? Um, uh, so, I mean, I'm as assuming that um, in the assessment criteria, um, there is you need to make clear uh, in the in the vision piece well why this is going to, to to be able to produce the the scientific outcomes that you want to uh, achieve and I think a, a a clear part of that will be um, understanding what what context it's sitting in as part of um, the, the, the the wider landscape of what's available um I, I hope that's uh, answered your question now I don't know whether Christian or others have anything to, to mention there I would, um, I would just say that um, if I go back to our purpose of doing of doing this for fMRI and looking at the accelerating the innovation um, and shortening the time it takes to get through the different TRL levels, we're not just looking to buy an off the shelf solution. So there has to be something innovative within what you're doing um, to to demonstrate to demonstrate that. So uh, yes. It, there may be components within within it, but some somehow the proposal will need to show the innovation. Okay, thanks, Christian. Um, the the next question here um, is sensor interaction with the control system in scope. Um, so uh, again, referring back to the, the 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 definition of what we're saying is TRL. It must be um, uh, deployable in the correct context so um uh, with a you know with my slightly uh, non non 
technical mind on if that if if, if that is uh, required to demonstrate that it is deployable then i would say that it is in scope uh, christian i don't know whether you have anything else to comment so there. so i think i think this comes under the integration activity which is is why there's separate funding uh be uh for that so in in that sense the sensor projects do need to think about how the sensors will interact with the platforms but the reason for uh, defining the RS232 uh, output is, is so that we can do um, a, a plug and play solution with um, with the platforms and that we can then iterate the data, uh, you know, the data flows uh, behind that and work on that with you. So yes, it's in scope, um, but it is very much part of that integration funding. Question. Um, the uh, next question from Anthony Lucio. Um, if we propose to reach TRL7 for a biogeochemical sensor within the project, you must also indicate how it can progress beyond TRL7 after the project ends using new funding. So I guess this is about your know, kind of um, uh, future utility of whatever ends up here. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's not a... Sorry, Christian, go for it. So I was, I was just going to say, I, I what, what we're looking for is that, TR, uh, that we are already at TRL7. We're not going to be supporting the move from TRL6 to 2.7. We're looking for TRL7 upwards. Um, so uh, to give us that confidence that we've got a fairly mature technology and that we're moving it into deployment and overcoming that barrier. Thank you. Okay. Um, and what seems to be the final question is, uh, the impression I got is that the focus on use of the underwater system, so ALR and gliders, and not other platforms, e.g. surface and USBs, is that right? Yes, this is to be integrated within uh, the National Marine Equipment Pool um, for the, yes, for, for kind of deployment uh, in underwater platforms. So yes, this is not for Big sensors or other other platforms like that, and um, that, um, I, yeah, um, great. Okay, unless there's any um, final questions, um, no. Okay, uh, in which case, um, it's just for me to say thank you so much for uh, attending the webinar and thank you for the interest in the call. Um, please do contact us if you have any uh, further questions um, about um, eligibility or anything else. I'd be happy to answer that. Uh, we'll put together an FAQs document, put a, a recording of this, and we'll email up slides in the, in the short term. But otherwise, um, thank you very much, and, uh, and, and good luck with your applications. Bye.